All right, folks, so today I want to make a review of my boots that I have been wearing in the last years in the wilderness. Now, first of all, I want to say that it's pretty important that you have some good and sturdy boots on you in the wilderness because first of all, you want to avoid potential injury because if you're you know, wearing sandals in the forest, it can happen that you get poked by a, by a very sharp stick in the foot and then you might have problems with walking, you might have a wound which gets infected and then it gets really nasty because your feet, they were all of your weight. So they are pretty important, right? And the next thing is that your shoes should be at least ankle height or a little bit above that because most of the snake bites, they happen at ankle height. So there are a ton of reasons why you should invest in good boots. And these are the boots that I have acquired in the last years. And with some of which I'm very happy, but with others I'm not. And that's why I want to make a video today so that you save some money when you are going to buy some good boots. Stay tuned. Alrighty, so now let's start with the first boot here at the side. These here are my winter boots, which I can highly recommend. These here, uh, by the brand Kamik. It's a Canadian brand and if one folk knows about the cold then it's the Canadians. And these boots have kept me warm for quite some years now and yeah they are made from a plastic sole. The plastic comes up to here. It's very similar to a rain boot and then there starts very thick leather which goes up and yeah the shoe is waterproof up to here. Also, um, to make the leather waterproof, you have to impregnate it, okay? So that's not to forget. So now if you take out the inner shoe of the boot. Okay, I got it. Uh, the inner shoe of the boot is made from 85% polyester and 15% polypropylene. So that's a pretty good insulator and it's also golden and shiny. It looks like there is a um, aluminum foil in there, just like a space blanket. So this is a very good insulator against the cold. So, and here at the inside, there is another layer of very thick white material. And then you have the plastic at the inside. Now, the most important thing is uh, when you want to buy a pair of these boots, you really should get one size bigger. So normally I have 39, size 39, it's a European size. And the next size is 40 and these boots are 40. So you want to buy them a little bit bigger. Why? Because you want to have a little bit more space left for a very thick sock. So if you go in into the shoe like this with just a thin sock, then it might happen that you get cold feet. But with a warm sock, you won't get cold feet anymore. So that's really important. So if you get this shoe, please don't make, make the mistake to buy them in your size, in your actual size. I have done that with another Kamek boot and then I got cold. And yeah, then I learned from my mistake. Then I got one size bigger and my feet were fine. It was awesome. So please learn from my mistake. So really awesome boots. I love them. And in Austria, it gets really cold. We have minus 20 degrees in winter time. So that's a must have if you live in a colder climate, right? If you live in California, you don't need boots like this, of course. Okay, the next boots are these ones here. The brand of these boots is Timberlands. Pretty awesome boot and you can see a lot of people wearing them and I like to wear them in springtime and in autumn, in fall, because they have this fur at the inside which makes them even warmer. And here I have made the same mistake. I have bought them in 39 but yeah, I can't fit a thick sock in the shoe anymore. So yeah, with these shoes, I'm fine down to five degrees Celsius, but lower it's 
I'm going to get cold feet. And I really regret that I haven't bought the shoe a little bit bigger because these are awesome boots, right? So you can go camping with them day in and day out. And Timberland is a little bit on the more expensive side, but I've seen other brands which are quite similar to this shoe. So if you want to spend less money, go for the other brands because they make kind of the same quality. And yeah, for the Kamek boots, I think I paid like 100 euros. And these were 130 or so. So yeah, pretty awesome boots. And I highly recommend them. Okay, then for summertime, I once was in a shop and then I looked at this awesome fancy desert boots. And so I said to myself, well, just go for it. They look awesome. They must be awesome. And I, then I have worn them in my videos. And people said, yeah, awesome shoes. Wow, cool. Uh, what brand are they? And yeah, the brand is Magnum. And they're called Elite Spider. Size is 39. So um, yeah, at first sight I was pretty happy with them, but then I tried them out and I think they are advertised as desert boots, right? So they have this tan look, Coyote tan, and they, they might fit pretty good into the desert. Yeah, I can see that. But here in my environment, they are not really good because the second that you step into a small creek because you want to cross the creek or maybe it's raining a little bit and maybe you, you walk through a wet lawn because it has rained before. The moment that you step into the creek, the entire boot is going to get wet, okay? They are not waterproof at all. And the bad thing is that they are made from this very thick padded material and it's taking forever to get the shoe dry, okay? So one time I had, I stepped into a creek and all of the shoe got soaking wet and then I stayed one night in the forest and I just put them besides the fire and then it happened that through the heat the glue here destroyed itself and now this flap at the sole at the front of the sole was coming off and now that looks pretty shitty right <laughs> so the sole is fine, but here at the front, it should really be stitched so that this part can't come off. Yeah. In summertime, these shoes also get very hot. So I'm really wondering how people in the desert should wear them because it gets way hotter than here in, in Austria. So yeah, I, I cannot recommend this shoe. Maybe other people have made more positive experiences. That's okay by me, but I haven't. And that's why I do not recommend this shoe. Okay. Okay. After I have bought these shoes, I fell for these ones here. And these ones are Hikes boots. I don't know the exact brand name. And yeah, I've worn them quite a lot here. You can see that the plastic was damaged and yeah. These are a little bit better than these ones, I have to say. They are a little bit more lightweight, you know. They're the same size, but this one looks a little bit more slim. And um, yeah, here they have this stitched plastic on the tip of the shoe. And yeah, but here you have the same thing like here. So one day when the glue is not working anymore, this will come off and then it will, will be really hard to glue it back on. And yeah, these shoes are not waterproof at all. So if you step into water, they are soaking wet. And also they are very thick as well. They have this padded material too. And they take forever to dry out and in summertime they get really hot. So honestly, I don't recommend these shoes as well. Well, 
these are a little bit better than these but I don't recommend all of them and I wouldn't buy them again. I think these were 130 and these were the same price so a lot of money that I have thrown out of the window you know. So now I have my winter boots and I have my boots for springtime and autumn for fall but I don't have summer boots so I have made a decision to buy a certain shoe that I had when I was a teenager. Back then I was wearing Doc Martens. I had a black pair and I have worn them day in and day out. And they were awesome shoes. Unfortunately, I've got rid of my last pair so I can't show it today anymore. But I got a new pair of Doc Martens and this time I got a brown pair. So this is awesome for survival. This brown really fits my environment and Doc Martens are a little bit on the more expensive side so I think I paid like 150 euros for this shoe here but they are made from a very good quality leather they are very comfortable and the leather is thick enough that it can fend off a snake bite it's thick enough to give your ankle stability but it's not too thick so that it's getting too warm in summertime and also if you impregnate the leather it's going to be quite waterproof. So in my opinion this shoe has every advantage over this shoe here. If these boots ever get wet then it's really no problem to dry them out by the fire because yeah the material is much thinner it will dry out faster and if you ever you know gonna put these shoes besides the fire you also have to watch out that the plastic at the sole doesn't melt because of course the bottom part is made from plastic but at least i don't have this silly flap up here which i don't need anyway so sometimes it's just the right decision to go for a classical design and Doc Martens, yeah, it's a little bit expensive. So if you want to spend less money, you can get different brands which make almost the same quality. Also, if you don't want to spend so much money, you can buy some used soldier boots in the army surplus store. That's another good source of really good boots. So I'm really happy with my new Doc Martens. They're comfortable, I like them. and. These are my new old survival shoes now. I'm a big fan of leather. It's just, I think it's the best natural material which outweighs, you know, synthetic textile materials so much. So I'm really, I'm, yeah, I have to say my heart goes for leather. So if you agree, let me know in the comment section. If you don't agree, let me know as well. And yeah, I want to thank you for watching. If you want to support my channel in any way, please consider buying some Survival Lily t-shirts, which you can find in my Spreadshirt shop. The link is in the description below. Thank you for watching and stay tuned till next time.